Mm -hmm. So so let me just get this right then. It, it, would it be fair to say that in that sense you you're arguing that um, the content is is worthwhile, but it's the presentation that's problematic for you? Well, it's a bit more subtle than that. I mean, it just sort of has to do with like what your agenda is. I mean, um, if like let's let's forget about all these issues about about um, information processing. If I if I just told you that I want to design a refrigerator, but instead of objective criteria like the uh, efficiency and the performance, how cold stuff can get, and how much you know the the materials cost and how durable it would be, these are all things that can be defined and measured, and 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 an engineer can work with those. But if I said I told you I want to achieve the aesthetics of pure refrigeratorness, <laughs> you'd say, well, what the, what is that? <laughs> you know, and and um, when we uh, the the AI thing does that with information processing, we we sort of pretend that we have some objective criteria because of Turing test like things, where we can put on these theatrical shows, mm -hmm. but actually we don't. There's, it, we're just basically um, relaxing our precision of engineering goals. Uh, and somehow pretending we aren't, and it just it just makes us in, it makes us into fools, in my opinion. You know, I mean, it doesn't. It's not. It it, it we, we lose track of of actual successes and actual progress. Um, I've I've always been an enthusiast for understanding how the brain works as well we can, as best we can, and I've worked on models of parts of the brain. What I really just object to really really strongly is the sort of vague agenda of making computers like people. Um, because both because I think it makes you're more likely to make people machine-like in the end when when you make an interaction work. I mean, an example of that is what I was talking about, where we defined away the sort of nerves part of both Jeopardy and chess. Mm -hmm. So in that case, people are sort of reducing themselves to make the machine smart. So that's one danger. But another danger is we don't really have the design criteria we can understand anymore. We're working on sort of a vague fantasy, and it becomes like this sort of religious exercise or an aesthetic exercise. And, you know, to me, if I'm going to do engineering, I want to do engineering. You know, I want to be able to tell how well I did. I want to have results that I can measure objectively. And the, the whole AI framework throws all that away for this fantasy. So is that, is that then the, the sort of uh, main argument also behind why um, the, 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 the technological singularity is perhaps of nothing more but a new religious idea for the geeks or for the nerds? <laughs> Well, I mean, um, oh, I guess, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand, for me, the singularity's been around for a long time, because I, I must have been arguing about the singularity, God, when did I have my first argument about it? In my teens, at Caltech, probably, I don't know, I mean, really, way back, I mean, um, I, uh, this was like, in the early 80s, this used to be like a typical argument at Marvin Minsky's dinner table. <laughs> Uh, and so I, it's not, you were talking about it as a new religion. Actually, I think there's, it's actually kind of, it's older than a lot of stuff. It's older than a lot of um, weird fundamentalisms in, in the world. Um, it's been around. Well, and, I mean, yeah, three or four I, decades or even a hundred years uh, is relatively new compared to the major religions. That's, that's, that's what I meant. <laughs> You know, it's funny, like, um, a lot of the fanaticisms in the major religions actually are pretty recent. We sort of don't realize how, you know, th there might have been, like, a few theorists who were talking about, um, oh, I don't know, um, certain kind of Salafi thoughts in Islam, for instance. Yeah, there was always this thing of, like, people who'd been in jail in Egypt and stuff, but, like, it really kind of took hold a little more recently as, as a movement, and uh, I can give many other examples. Um Anyway, whatever it's a uh, uh, so yeah. I mean, to me, the singularity is um, it's just recreating the same stuff that happens in other religions. I mean, even no matter how technical you are, no matter how good a programmer you are, or whatever, you're still basically powerless in the winds of fate and death, and you know, just the awful contingencies that we live with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these like little weird fragments who somehow experience this fleeting life, you know, and that can sound bleak, actually, I think within our little fleeting lives, we can have sort of, um, kind of a, a timeless, uh... The, one in, of the in, interesting uh, features here can is I, that... Can I just may, sure, may I finish? Sure, this? sure. And so, so in, response to, in response to those fears, you know, we can sort of imagine afterlives, we can imagine some 
grant project that we're the special heroes of or something like that and and that's what all the religions are about and and <laughs> and the and the singularity kind of precisely mirrors the them, you know, and and uh, it might be just inevitable that this is what people do. Yeah, I mean the 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 commonalities are just impossible to ignore or deny. I mm-hmm. mean, immortality is always the major if, issue of religion, um, and and is is one way or another uh, associated with uh, sing, both singularitarianism and transhumanism. Now, uh, by the way, those. Um, those are kind of interesting because um, the singularity up until I'm trying to think when this happened. The first time I heard the singularity, nobody was taught. It was just it, the, the assumption was just that all the people would be killed by the machines, um, not that they'd survive or become immortal. Um, and the notion of people surviving and becoming immortal happened. And I'm I'm trying to remember who expressed that first. I don't... Was it Vernon Vinci? I think it, it might have actually been Ray. It might have been Ray Kurzweil. I'm not... I as far as I remember, it was Werner Vinci in his book uh, Marooned in Real Time. It might have been Werner, yeah. Where I, the society is in a post-singularitarian sort of uh, society where people uh, do live uh, indefinitely and are able to right. choose their I don't even think biological I age. But, but anyway, I'll, my point though is that, um, and even though I think Werner might have coined the term singularity, the idea was around well before, and actually even that phase of the of Werner and Ray was pretty late in my experience. There mm-hmm. was a, a whole thing before, a whole earlier phase. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea can be traced at least to Stanislav Ulam and, and uh, John von Neumann, but uh, one of the things that's interesting to me is that if, if you ask a member of any other or, or a follower of any of the other religions, they would readily say, I'm a Muslim or, or, or I'm a Jew or I'm a Christian and so on. But the funny thing about geeks or, or followers of that new religion called the singularity uh, is that many or most of them either would say they're agnostic or atheistic or, or even Christian or any other religion, but none of them would say they're singularitarian as a form of religion. Uh, so that strikes me as something like... A, I don't know how to really define it, but as a, a, a sort of a form of a self-denial, uh, in a way. No, it's not self-denial. It's denial of the other religions. In other words, um, every religion, and it's really, like there's a, there's a point where religions start to acknowledge that there are other religions and there can be a tolerance of differences. Uh, but if you if you just are sure that you know the truth, then the other people just kind of seem like different. They don't count. You don't see yourself as a religion yet because you don't. You know, you, you're you're just so sure of yourself, and uh, a lot of there's, there's a lot of um, there's a huge problem with a kind of um, elitism among technical people, which is sometimes called nerd supremacy or, or whatever. But there's this sense that if you're not um, if you don't get the world in a techie way, you don't get the world, and you're 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 sort of uh, Left behind, <laughs> use the Christian uh, terminology, but you're just sort of, uh, um, or the evangelical term, doomed. You're, you're just, you're just uh, a fool. You're lost. You don't know anything. And I, I think that's a, a that's a sort of a, a shameful kind of um, elitism that we should really shed. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so so to extend that a little bur- further then uh, does that mean that in your opinion the the chance of any potential technological singularity is zero no well no i mean i think it's an absurd framing it's like another version of the jeopardy show what there's definitely a chance of major technological failures um you know so could we have um could we have mass fatalities because of malfunctioning machines? Yes. Can some people interpret that as a singularity because they were running on software? Sure. But would that interpretation be of any use? No. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so I do worry about large technological failures, especially um, when you have a lot of systems that work together so that you could have systemic failures. Um, sure. So, so, you know, it, am I worried about... Uh, Malfunctions of software, you know, network software-driven 
instrumentation? Yes, absolutely. But the framework of the singularity of, of the singularity is a uh, um, a genuinely useless one for thinking about that. So I, I so I, I can't I can't accept it as a meaningful question. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, in your book here. Um